Hey guys, John's here. Alright, ayun. So, heto na nga. IFA in Berlin just started and still ongoing pero kahit syempre, wala ako dun. Isishare ko pa rin sa inyo yung mga interesting na announcements na nakita ko. And, 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 may exciting announcement ako para sa inyo somewhere in this video. So, make sure you watch until the end. And with that out of the way, here's your weekly tech notes. We have a mixed bag of new phones in IFA this year. Siyempre, walang kasiguraduhan kung lahat na to darating dito sa Pinas. Pero, mabuti na alam natin, di ba? First on our list is BlackBerry Key 2 LE. This phone has a Snapdragon 636 processor, a lighter version than the 660 and the Key 2, but not much noticeable in performance. RAM is only 4GB with 32 to 64 gigabytes for storage, a 13 and 5 megapixel rear cameras, and ladder being used for depth sensing. And for BlackBerry's highlight, unfortunately, the keyboard can't be used as a trackpad anymore. When it comes to design, the outer shell is made of polycarbonate plastic, but still feels like metal. Corners are a bit rounded now, and color variants are now interesting. We have slate, a gray and black combination, Champagne, gold and black with a touch of green, and Atomic, a vibrant red and black combo. 32GB variant will cost $399, while the 64 version will be $449. HTC U12 Lite is HTC's new phone in the mid-range market. The design looks like the old Pixel, but lower section has some grooves to add more grip to the hands, while the top is plain glossy acrylic. The display is 6 inches LCD with Full HD Plus resolution with minimum bezel. It has no IP rating and has a 3.5mm headphone jack but also has a stereo speaker via the speaker grill at the bottom and the earpiece. The front facing 13 megapixel camera now has LED flash to help taking a well lit selfies while the rear camera has 16 and 5 megapixel camera which just like the Blackberry is for added bokeh effect. Again just like Blackberries. It uses Snapdragon 636 and the reason is to be more energy efficient. Huawei Mate 20 Lite is obviously will be a lighter version of Huawei's flagship phone, the Mate 20. Maganda dito sa phone na to ay yung kanyang AI. AI helps the rear camera. 20 and 2 megapixel camera sensors but the main highlight is its 24 megapixel front camera with another 2 megapixel for depth sensing. This phone uses pixel binning which uses adjacent pixels to help shots look better especially in low light. Mukhang obvious na para kanina tong phone na to, tama? Additional feature is some Animoji and face unlock. The 6.3 inch display is using the LTPS panel and has full HD plus resolution with 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio. Unlike the first two phones, Huawei uses their own chipset and on this phone, it has their Kirin 710 processor instead of the Snapdragons. It also uses 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes internal storage with this expandable via micro SD card, and 3700 mAh battery. Being a Huawei device, meron din itong GPU boosts, which gives the phone more performance but still saves battery. Last year, Sony released XZ1. Nang na design is flat na, sharp pa yung edge, at mahirap hawakan. Kagaya ng katabong sa jeep na sa sobrang flat at edgy, natutuso ka. Dahit ka pa, boy! Pero lumabas ang XZ2 4 to 5 months ago with new design. Curved at masarap ng hawakan. Okay, hindi na ako magre-reference ng kahit ano. With their new Sony Xperia XZ3, the design is very similar. However, the display is now different because it now uses OLED and bezels are now thinner than the previous model. Since it's fairly close from the XZ2 release, specs aren't really different. It still has the flagship Snapdragon 845, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of storage. What's new, aside from the display, is its front camera which now has 13 megapixel sensor with f1.9 aperture which is better for low light. This phone comes with Android P which I think is the first phone that comes with the latest Android OS. Being a flagship phone, this will cost $900 upon release. Hindi naman pwede mawala ang laptop sa event na kagaya nito. Mukhang light is the name of the game. Dahil itong mga laptop na to, eh sa sobrang gaan, pwedeng pwede nang dalhin ng mga estudyante sa mga universities nila. Asus ZenBook 13 and 14 has a unique feature that other companies don't have. And that is a trackpad. Tanga! Lahat ng laptop meron nun. Hindi pa kasi ako tapos, no? 
trackpad na pwede pang gawing numpad. With just a press of a button, your trackpad will be illuminated which will display your numpad. Not only it's unique, it also saves space instead of having a dedicated numpad which will make your laptop bigger. Another awesome thing here is its nano edge display with very thin bezels and Asus has to ergo lift hinge which lifts the base of the laptop for better cooling. Now being a thin and light, it's not shy about its specs. This unit has Intel's 8th gen i7 processor, GeForce MX150, 16GB of RAM and 1TB SSD. They claim that the battery would last 14 hours but of course, hindi ko talaga masabi so... Itong susunod na laptop ay eh, more on media consumption dahil ang operating system nito ay hindi Mac, hindi rin Windows. Meet Lenovo Yoga Chromebook, a laptop that runs Chrome OS which is made by Google. Now, Chrome OS has been there for a while, but in a country like ours, we stick to the usual since most programs that we use are still not meant for other OS. Still, this laptop has 8th gen Intel Core i5 with internal graphics card, 15.6 inch touchscreen display, 8GB of RAM, and 64 or 128GB of storage. Seeing the size of the display, obviously this is good for those who are binge watching on Netflix. If you are familiar with Android, this is a better companion with you as some Android apps can run on this machine. Unlike other Chromebooks, this device costs $599 for the full HD version with 64GB up to $749 for the 4K model with 128GB. Now don't be sad Windows users, meron na siyang laptop para sa'yo. The Lenovo Yoga Book C930 really looks like a book and just like a book, there are no keys to press. This laptop, just like Asus's approach, uses a second display to show a keyboard. The second display however, uses e-ink display which means it will only show you a black and white color. Now, don't be sad if you think it's unfortunate because if you are a book lover, this display is the best since it will really look like a piece of paper with letters printed on it. This unit either runs with 7th gen Intel Core i5 or M3 and the battery will last up to 8 hours and the price starts at $1000 which is for me a fair enough price for a specific market. Remember, this is a keyless laptop. Kung sa mga laptop at smartphones, may ibang gadgets din na inannounce last week. At isa na rito ang bagong Protrek smartwatch ng Casio. Six weeks ago, on my first video on Tech Notes, I mentioned how TechWatch Pro is a good design due to the approach they use to save battery. And that is via dual display. Casio, who originated the idea, has a newer version of their Protex smartwatch. It is still thick, but is 4mm narrower than its predecessor. The band has more notches to fit the majority, and the display is now using OLED instead of IPS, which can make it more battery efficient. It also uses the newest Wear OS of Google, which is a huge plus for me because it means it is not constrained to a specific app market. Speaking of market, there is no price tag yet and even the release date was not even mentioned. Para naman sa mga mahilig mag-travel pero hindi maiwan ng headphones, this might suit your needs. Sony WH-1000X Mark III is a wireless headphone with lightweight and has metallic design though some plastics are still there to help with the weight. It also has mic to activate ambient sound and noise cancellation. It also has 30 hours battery life and USB-C charging and is quick charge capable. I hope it arrives soon kasi ang ganda talaga ng specs eh. Kaya lang, sana abot kayo yung presyo. Okay, so gaya na sabi ko sa intro kanina, meron akong announcement para sa inyong lahat. Remember yung Pocophone? Sabi ko sa India lang tayo re-release, di ba? Ang totoo niyan, may usap-usapan na nadarating din yan dito sa Pilipinas. At confirm! Darating nga! According to Pinoy Techno Guide, Pocophone will be released here on September 6 with a price tag of 18,000 for the 64 gigabyte version and 20,000 for the 128. Since puro specs na rin naman na sinasabi ko kanina pa, tignan nyo na lang yung screen nyo para sa comparison ng Poco Phone, Galaxy S9 Plus, at Honor Play. And that's about it. If you find this information useful, feel free to hit the thumbs up button. But if not, let me know in the comments down below how can I improve this kind of video. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video.